the new era that we enter, that we have entered, by studying genomes and studying proteomes that are the, 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 the proteins and the genetic uh, um, properties that we have that are basic to us. We are going to enter the new era in terms of that there are not only 500 sites where a drug can be active, but uh, 10 to 50,000 50, of these sites where a drug can be active. That's uh, characteristic for the, for the new uh, uh, era that we have entered. And plants can play a major role in this process. Uh, we are now at the Laboratory of Natural Products in the Faculty of Medicine of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and the School of Pharmacy. Uh, this laboratory does uh, research on various aspects of plant products. Uh, one of the major pro uh, problems we have been investigating for many years is the cannabis plant as well as materials present in our body, in the body of animals, that uh, uh, whose action is completely parallel to the action found uh, with the compounds in the, in the plant. So we, ha we are working in two fields. On one hand, the plant products and derivatives of the plant products. The other hand, the brain material from animals, which does the same thing that the plant products do. Cannabis uh, is a plant with uh, quite exceptional activity. There is no other plant that has the same constituent and has the same activity. It's unique. In many respects, it's unique. When an MS patient, as a matter of fact, anybody who, uh, who smokes uh, cannabis, uh, at least one of the compounds present in cannabis, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the active compound in cannabis, goes into the brain, goes into uh, to the nerve cells, and binds to the receptor, to the cannabinoid receptor. And then the cannabinoid receptor starts a series of reactions which reduce some of the symptoms of the multiple sclerosis. Now, why should the brain spend energy in order to make a receptor for a compound that is present in a, in a plant? It doesn't make sense. But the sense is that it has receptors for something that the brain produces, and it uses these receptors to start a reaction. So, obviously, for us at least, was that the brain produces compounds which will activate these receptors. And just by chance, THC also does that. So we started looking for these compounds that may be present in the brain or may be present in the periphery, in the spleen or other parts in the gut. And in 1992, we were lucky to be able to identify very, very, very small amounts of material which binds to these receptors which were discovered by Dr. Howlett and uh, Dr. Munro in Cambridge and these receptors were stimulated by the compound found uh, in the brain as much as it was stimulated by THC.
grow here by the GAP guidelines. These are international guidelines for growing herbal medicine. Here we grow complete biologic organic, which is very important at this moment. Plants only get water, and sometimes when they really have shortage, we give them a little bit of organic fertilizer. It is very low dosage. This plant is an, a crossing of two kinds of cannabis plants, the cannabis sativa and the cannabis indica. The crossing of these two plants make very strong varieties and with strong I mean high in THC levels. The process of the plant begins here. This is section 4, cell 0. Here are the mother plants where we take the cuttings from. As you can see, this person is making cuttings of the plant and these cuttings we put in special rooting blocks. These rooting blocks make that they are rooted in about two or three weeks. After that, we put the rooted cuttings into small pots that they can grow for another week. If they grow for another week, we put them in other cells, especially for the breeding of the plant, the flowering state. They have to stay about eight or nine weeks in these flowering cells. After that, they are ready for harvesting. We bring them to section three, where the clippers are. The clippers are people who clip the plant. They take off the leaves and the stalks of the flowered heads, control the flowered heads if they are good of quality, without fungus or burning spots. And after that, they make an A choice and a B choice. Then the drying process begins, where they have to dry for another few weeks. And when it's controlled, uh, especially uh, checked if the THC, CBD and CBN levels are okay, then the batch is good for packaging. After packaging, we let it sterilized by gamma radiation and let it control by a big government laboratory in Holland for uh, fungicides, pesticides and heavy metals. Well, there are studies about this uh, cannabis, so you also learn it at the university. Uh, you work also with the TH, H, uh, THC acid, so you can also isolate uh, the stuff. And uh, you know how it works. You can see some relaxation, see some... Uh, uh, it works also uh, in the senses, in the nerves. So you know how it works, just in theory. The only way why it shouldn't work in the way you can uh, buy it in the coffee shop is that you don't know how much THC is in it. Now with this medical cannabis, uh, there's well research, well uh, developed. It's, it's pure, there are not, uh, there's not so much waste in it. So you know how much comes to the patient. So that's why you can uh, study how it works so you can also uh, predict how it can work. So in that way, it's medicine.